weeks we may be in blockbuster gaming season, but that doesn't mean we can't fit in a bit of mobile gaming. Yes, and first up we've got The Executive, a game that combines the button-down culture of the corporate world with a werewolf apocalypse? <laughs> The Executive is a 2D beat-em-up with some quick-time platforming thrown into the mix. The game begins in Silver Strike Mining Company headquarters, where a disgruntled employee beats up a vending machine, turns into a werewolf, and then the fight is on. And that's all we really know about what's going on. This game is light on story, but heavy on punching those werewolves. Yeah, a little bit too light, if you ask me. I mean, I'm all for saving the world, but, you know, at least tell me why. I think that's part of the game's charm, though. You know, it's about those quirky characters that you have to fight. As well as the garden variety werewolves, there's some were-frogs, weightlifting were-rams, and even sumo were-rhinos. And you fight all of these crazy creatures as a Clark Kent look-alike in a suit. <laughs> yeah, I do think they've paced it well, though. Each level sees you running, bashing through walls, and punching out some were creatures. It's all very rapid fire, which I think works well for quick sessions. Yeah, I agree. Also, the combat is very easy to pick up. You just tap on enemies high or low, depending on where you want to punch or kick them. To block, you just hold your finger on the half of your character that's being attacked. It all makes sense, and it's quite fun. Yeah, and I appreciated how easy it was to just pick up as well. But then there's a good level of challenge in predicting attacks, timing blocks, and knowing when to wail on them. Yeah, it's spot on for a mobile game. I did have some issues with the difficulty spike, though. I played through all these early levels really quickly, but then all of a sudden you hit this boss that just takes you out in a couple of hits. It just caught me off guard a bit, Hex. I was feeling so invincible, and then this came up and hurt my ego. Really? Well, it didn't bother me so much. There are only a handful of bosses, and you can always skip the levels that are too frustrating. After each level, you earn a rank and some cash you can use to unlock special attacks and spells like healing. Alternatively, you can invest in your mining company, which gives you small bonuses for things like blocking attacks and completing stunts. But I can't say I felt much incentive to go back and earn a better rank for the levels I'd completed. There is a decent amount of content here, though, for the asking price. And no microtransactions, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, overall, I had a pretty good time with this. It's got a great sense of energy and momentum that pulled me along and prevented it from feeling too samey. I'm giving it three and a half stars. If you ever wanted to punch a werewolf, this game is for you. I'm giving it three stars. <laughs> Our next game is from Square Enix, who seem to be taking mobile gaming very seriously considering the quality of their recent Agent 47 games, Hitman Go and Hitman Sniper, plus the endless runner Lara Croft Relic Run. And now it looks like they've crammed everything they've learned into their newest Tomb Raider game, Lara Croft Go. Hex, every time I've turned around and looked at you this week, you've had your head into this game just playing it. Yes, I am right on board with this. I liked what they did with Hitman Go, but that was a little too clinical for me, which I get suits that character. But with this game, they've given it an aesthetic and tone that feels like old school Tomb Raider, but at the same time fresh and new. I do get the feeling that the team at Square Enix maybe played a bit of Monument Valley and took more than a few design influences from it. Oh, I don't think they've copied it, though. No, I'm not saying that, but they've definitely moved way beyond the mechanics of the board game Go, which is what this is based on. Yeah, well, I think they needed to. Adding creatures like snakes, spider crabs, and giant lizards have given this a level of complexity that makes this more than just turn-based gameplay. The way all of these creatures have different movements and purposes is very clever. Snakes remain static, but will attack you when you enter their field of view. Spider crabs react to your movements and are handy at triggering pressure plates. And those big lizards will chase you if you get too close. And while you're making your way through tombs and taking out or avoiding nasties, you do come across spears to throw and clear areas, levers that open up new pathways, blades that are vicious but handy, and lots of gems and gold pieces to find, which give you access to a range of Lara Croft's classic wardrobe items, which is also fun. So Hex, tell me, why has this mobile game in particular wrapped its tentacles around you so tightly? I think it's just that drip feed of introducing new mechanics and the way they all work together. Plus, you never feel like you're stuck on a level, but it doesn't hold your hand either. This is probably my favourite mobile game that I've ever played, Bajo. I'm giving it five out of five. Whoa, big scores! I love the presentation of this game. It's just so well laid out and well designed, and I love that when you look at it, you know exactly what you have to do, but there's still challenge there. I'm giving it four stars. 